Thank you for joining us here in Jerusalem. There's no doubt that we're in very hard times. And in hard times, our eyes are upon the Lord. In times like that, we're seeking comfort, but we're also seeking direction. And this is where we find our direction, especially in times like that. Welcome back to the studio of TBN here in Jerusalem. We're in time of war. And in time of war, there are many questions that are being asked, especially for young men and women all around the country, but especially in the body of Messiah. Questions that are not easy to answer and that I'm sure are debated all over the world. Today, we have the great honor to have with us Dr. Erez Tzoref. Dr. Erez Tzoref is the president of One for Israel Bible College here in Israel. Erez, what a great joy having Shalom. you with us. Great to be here. Great honor. Erez, you work with young men and women who put their faith in the Messiah of Israel, in Yeshua. And the first question that comes up to my head is where was God on the 7th of October between 6.30 in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon? As, as you know, we have over 1,400 people which were murdered, over 200 people which were kidnapped, and many, many, many more wounded. So first of all, it's a, it's a very good question. And I think the first response is to, first of all, acknowledge the fact that it is, it is something that is difficult to grapple with. You know, we all know people that were hurt in the first circle, you know, their children were killed or kidnapped or very difficult things. And I think the question of where was God in those hours? How can a good and loving God allow such terrible things to happen? It really touches not only on October the 7th, but it's a part of a bigger question. And, and that's the question of, of evil in the world in general. Mm. I think the question of evil has to take into the equation that God is not a dictator that operates robots. Mm. Because if we were robots, then we didn't have a choice. And if you don't have a choice, then you only do good, but then you're just a machine. You're, you don't have your own free will. And by definition, if you have, as a human, a free will, then you have the choice of doing good and doing evil. Mm -hmm. And I think each one of us, I mean, it's a human thing, each one of us at one time or another in our lives have chosen not to do the good, you know? We have not chosen the good of other people around us, uh, people that we may even claim to care for. Now, not all of us do atrocities of that magnitude, obviously. Mm -hmm. But when you put a group of people together and then there's a, some sort of an evil ideology, terrible, terrible things uh, can happen. Another question, uh, Erez. We're commanded to love our enemy. Yeah. But still, we need to serve in the Israeli army. We need to carry a weapon and we need to use this weapon. How do you balance those two things? Well, as, as, as we, we look at the Word of God, we see that in this world, and kind of connected to our previous question, uh, what we discussed, so there is evil in this world. We see that actually in the life of Jesus himself, of Yeshua himself, when he was facing evil, when he was facing dishonor to the name of God, he reacted. Mm -hmm. And he reacted in a way that was very surprising, but he wasn't turning the other cheek. He mm -hmm. stood against evil. And I think that sometimes turning the other cheek or loving our enemy can be misunderstood as being passive in the face of evil. And that's not what the Bible teaches uh, at all. As believers, we need to stand against evil. And when there is an evil ideology that calls to eradication of any other nation and that will not discuss any of this, what choice do you have? If someone is coming to murder your wife and your children, what are you gonna do? One of the people who died, one, a young soldier wrote a letter to his parents. He wrote it on his phone and he said, mom and dad, I'm going in. When he say in, is, he meant going into Gaza. But I'm not going in to revenge. I'm going in to defend my family. I'm going in to protect you guys. I'm going in because I love my parents, my family, and my country. So I think the balance between loving 
your enemy and defending your country is doing it as a defend. Absolutely. I think we see that many, many times. Again, I'm, I'm going back to the Word of God, and I think that we're seeing that we are commanded to stand against evil, not in a vengeful way, but firmly, nevertheless. There's one thing that can come out of this war is more hatred. Our soldier can come back home and they can be filled with hate. Young men and women who belong to our congregations, who are commanded to love, but they saw things, yeah. they've been involved in things that brought hatred in their heart. What's your answer? They see their friends, their loved one getting hurt. And it's very, very difficult uh, to separate what you personally experience from you know, hating, I mean, hate can be easily generalized, uh, particularly when you're hurt. And I think the challenge of pastors and spiritual leaders is to help our young people and our old people sometimes to, to separate that. It's not all Arab people that are terrible and it's not all Jewish people that are terrible. Being able to make that separation and to some degree say, I forgive, sometimes for terrible things. And it, takes, it can take time, I'm not saying, it's not an instant thing but it's something that brings deep, deep healing. Yeah, I do believe, I do believe that this forgiveness, to remove this hate, it has to be a move, a touch of the Holy yeah. Spirit. You cannot be a young man who saw what you saw and practice forgiveness. I believe it has to be a healing touch. Spiritual thing, absolutely. I remember when over 30 years ago, 30 some years ago, um, after I finished the military. And, and during the military, there were some difficult things that I saw and some of my friends got hurt. And I didn't even realize that, but there was, because of the pain, there was hatred in my heart. And about a year later, when I became, uh, for the first time I heard about Yeshua, and later on when I became his disciple, I never realized that this wound was still in my heart. And I remember the first time I met an Arab believer, it, it was very difficult for me, honestly it was. And I remember that as I was, as I arrived home and I thought about that, now this, this guy, this brother, I mean, he was, a, he was a true, genuine, loving believer in Jesus. And I had to repent and say, okay, this Arab person is, is my brother. I, I want to love him. And we became good friends afterwards, but I, I, I saw that in my own heart. Ares, we're sitting here in the studio of TBN, overlooking this beautiful city of Jerusalem. Do you have a message for the world. We're in time of war, terrible time for Israel. What's your message for the church around the world? I think the message for followers of Yeshua, uh, following us, our conversation, is that yes, we are called to show the love of the Messiah to all around us. We should also stand very firmly against the face of evil. As a Jewish believer in Yeshua, of course, my heart particularly hurts when I see hatred towards Jewish people in the United States, almost difficult to believe. And so uh, we're standing against that and we're standing against hatred against Arab people. Uh, urge you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need this prayer very much at this present time. Dr. Erez Sorev, what a great joy having you with us in the Thank studio. You. And to you, our friends, Let's be a voice. Let's ask God to fill us with forgiveness, with love in the family, at your churches, at your country, and pray that people will stop hating one another. And thank you once again for praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And shalom.